Hello, this is a tutorial to accompany my Learn to Make Beaded Fringe Earrings Kit. It comes with an instructional booklet, all of the supplies you need, and a pattern sheet which shows you exactly where to place the beads. This is the top half of the earring, and this is the bottom half of the earring, which is the fringe. This pattern sheet is also available as a PDF, which you can purchase separately from the kit. Um, and I will put a link below and it will also show you exactly what beads you need to purchase and what supplies you need. To begin, I'm taking my thread marked fire line and I'm going to cut about five to four feet of it. I usually make it about the length of my outstretched arms. This does not need to be exact because if you need to change your thread, you run out of thread while you're making it, I'm actually going to show you how to deal with that and how to add in a new thread. As a beginner, I would err on the side of a smaller thread because then you have less chances to have problems like a knot in your thread and that sort of thing. Next I'm going to thread my needle and then we're going to meet back here and learn how to make a ladder stitch. To begin your ladder stitch you're going to pick up four beads, slide them down your needle and down your thread towards the end until you have a three to four inch tail. And then you're going to take your needle and you're going to bring it back up through the first two beads only and then pull that tight it's forming a little loop and two sets of two beads should sit next to each other like this looking like a little ladder hence the name of this stitch and you're going to take your needle and come back down through the beads next to the beads you just came out of the second two beads in the ladder like so and now you're ready to add another set so pick up two beads we'll always be adding the same number of beads in this ladder stitch and you come back down through the beads you just came out of pull that tightly and then you're going to come back up through the two new beads like so, and pull that tightly, and you're ready for your next two beads. So pick up two more beads, go up through the last beads you added, pull that, and then we're going to bring it back down through the new beads. Pull tight. And we're starting to have a nice little chain here. So do that again, add two more, go down through the last beads, pull tight, and go up through the new beads. Okay, I'm going to walk you through this one more time. We pick up two beads, go up through the last beads, and down through the new beads and hopefully you are getting the hang of this by now let's see where we are looking good now we're going to bring in our pattern and see where we have to start adding the yellow beads so i'm counting here to see how many sets of white beads i need before i have to add my first yellow in so i'm going to go to my beads and then count and see how many sets I have there. Looks like I only have six, but I need to have seven sets before I begin my pattern. So I'm going to add another set of white beads. Okay, now that I have the correct number of white beads, it's time to add my first yellow. First, I want to take a look at my work and make sure the tail, my original tail, is at the bottom. So that's the way I'm going to build my pattern. So I'm adding one yellow, one white, and then I'm going to come up through the bottom. 
And now you'll see I sort of changed my technique here. I'm going to flip my work over and come up through the bottom again. Now that the work is a bit bigger, you have something to hold on to. And I prefer to do it this way where I flip the work and always I'm coming from the bottom. So I've added two more, I flip it over, I'm coming from the bottom. Like so. And then coming from the bottom again. Um, I just don't like bringing my needle down. You're more likely to poke yourself that way. I feel like I have more control when I'm coming up than going down, but it's completely up to you. You can continue to go up and down the original way we were doing it, but I also wanted you to see this method where I turn the work over so I'm always coming up from the bottom. So now that I've finished that section, I'm just going to keep adding groups of white beads till I get to the end of this row of ladder stitch. So why don't you work on that too and meet me back here at the end and we'll learn how to make our first row of double brick stitch. And now here I am at the end of my row of ladder stitch. I'm just adding the last two beads now and then I'm going to take a step back and admire my work. Make sure everything looks tight and my tails come out of the bottom. My working thread is coming out of the top. So now I'm ready to begin my row of double brick stitch. I'm going to be looking at the second row in the pattern and I am going to be working from the working thread side. I'm going to pick up four beads to start. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to bring my needle under the second bridge thread. You'll notice there are little thread bridges on top of the beads. I bring my needle underneath the second thread bridge from the outside. Right there. And then I'm going to pull that tightly. And when you do, your beads will look a little loopy and weird, but we're going to fix that. First thing I do is turn over my beadwork so that I'm always working away from my hand that's holding it. So I turn that over and then I'm going to bring my needle up through the second two beads. So that's up through the second two beads that we just added. Bring that up, pull. Make sure it's snug and then I'm going to bring my needle down through the first two beads and pull that snugly. And then to complete this, I'm going to bring it back up through the second two beads. Like that. And then when I pull tightly, everybody will be sitting right where they should. There we go. Everyone's nice and neat and straight. Give it a little tug. And then for the rest of this row, we'll be adding beads just two at a time. It's only when you begin the row that you add the four beads. Um, and that helps to just hide the thread. So now I pick up two beads, slide it under the next thread bridge, pull those snugly, and then come back up through those two beads. Pull tight. Try not to get your thread stuck like I just did. Um, pull that snugly and that should be sitting right there next to the other two. We're going to try that again. Pick up two more beads. Go underneath the next thread bridge. Pull that tightly and then bring your needle up through those two beads you just added. You're going to continue to build the row this way. This is your basic brick stitch. Now I'm looking at my pattern and I see that it is time to add a different color. So I'm going to pick up one purple, one white, go under the thread bridge, pull that through, and then back up through those two beads. Like 
simple type. You're looking good. The next two beads are two purple, so I'm going to pick up two purple. Get this sort of mulberry, winey purple. I don't know, calling it purple is easiest that way. And then the pattern is represented with a P. I'm coming up through those two beads after I just slid underneath the thread bridge. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this now. This is literally the way you add the rest of the row until you get to the end. I'm going to show you one more time and then I'm going to let you finish up by yourself. So this time we're adding two of the yellow beads, which are really a bit more pumpkin. But for the sake of the pattern, I have called them yellow and they are represented with a Y. And we'll just do two more. Underneath the thread bridge, pull it through, and then back up through those two beads. So when you get to the end of the row, meet me here and I'll help you start the second row. Okay, so I just wanted to go over starting a row of double brick stitch again, because I feel like it's the trickiest part of the whole thing. And once you get this down, you're good. So let's just go over this again, because it's annoying when you have to sort of backtrack through the video to figure it out. So we start with four beads, one, two, three, four. In this case, it's two white, a purple, and then a white, according to the pattern. So I have my four beads. I'm taking my needle under the second thread bridge, not the first, the second thread bridge. I pull it through, I flip my work so I'm working away from my holding hand. And then I'm gonna come up through the second two beads. Pull that snugly, and then bring it down through the first two beads. And now up through the second two beads and everyone will be sitting right where they should be sitting. Pull that snugly. And now you continue that row adding two at a time going under the next thread bridge in succession. Now you should pretty much have the hang of brick stitch and you should be able to continue working through the pattern until you get to the top. Um, in this next little section, I am going to show you how to change a thread if you should run out of thread while you're working through the rest of this pattern. So um, meet me there. Okay, so here I am going to add a new thread, but first I need to take my old thread and weave it down into my work to secure it and get it out of the way. So I'm going, taking my needle down through the two beads next to the last beads I just came out of. Here I'm turning my work so it's easier for me to work. And I'm going up through the next two beads. And then I'm gonna go up through two more beads. And then I'm gonna go down through the two beads right next to those two. So I can make a little loop. So I come down through those two, and then up through the two I was just in again. That makes a loop. And then I'm going to do that again. So I make two little loops, and the tension of the loops will keep the thread from coming unraveled. Some people like to make a knot. I don't like knots. This is perfectly fine. Um, the tension will always hold your work if you've done it enough. Here I'm doing another loop next to it. Honestly, one is enough, but I like to be extra secure. So here I am doing that. When you are ending a thread, it's really important that you leave yourself enough working thread left to be able to secure it properly. A lot of people 
work until there's like nothing left and then you can't you don't have anything to work with okay so I clipped that off it's out of my way and now I'm going to start a new thread so I thread a needle I find a place I want to start if you ever try to put your needle through beads and it seems really tough, just stop and pick other, other uh, beads because they are glass and if you force your way through them, they will snap and it's heartbreaking when you have all this work. Um, so you pull your needle through, hold a little tail, come down through the beads next to it like we did before. Again, we're going to make a little loop of tension to hold the thread in place. So we went down, now we're going back up making this little loop and you see I'm pulling it and it's not going anywhere so that loop really does work so I've made that loop and now I want to get up to that outside edge so I can continue working so I'm following a bead path to get myself there so I'm going up there I'm showing you here again how I need to get to the outside edge. So I go up and then I'm going to go down through these ones. So then I can then come up again through that outside edge and end up exactly where I need to be to start my next row. But now with a lot more thread, which is very exciting. And there we go. Okay, so hopefully now we've all finished our brick stitch and we've got to the last three beads at the top. Congratulations if you've made it there. Very proud of you. We're going to pick up one of our wire guards so we can attach it to the top of the brick stitch. So there are little holes at the bottom of the wire guard. We're going to go through the holes on one side, like so, and pull the wire guard down to the beads. like so and then we're going to pick up our earring finding and we're going to slip it through the hole there this bit's a bit finickety but you can do it just take your time okay pull that tight there now take your needle through the hole on the earring finding pull that through and then we're going to take it down through the other hole on the wire guard. I don't know why they're called wire guards. They should be called thread guards, but they're called wire guards if you're ordering any. So we're putting it down through that other hole on the wire guard, pull tight, and make sure your thread has stayed inside the little channel at the top. You don't want it coming loose, and otherwise it's pointless because the wire needs to be in the wire guard. So now, bring your needle through the outside set of beads like that the two beads bring it down and then we want to repeat that process just to make sure it's extra strong so i'm going to bring my needle down through another set of beads and then i'm going to work my way up if you have my instruction booklet uh, there is a little diagram of exactly the path that you want to follow here. But basically you just want to get your needle back up to that first set of two beads that you started at. Okay, bring it back up to those beads, through the hole in the wire guard, through the hole in the earring finding, like so. Pull that tight. And now bring it back down through the other side of the wire guard and back into the beadwork. So those first two beads, never go through more than two beads at a time. It's just risky. You might break a bead. So you bring it down through there. 
and that is all pretty snug right now but we're going to weave this thread back into the beadwork and do one of those little loop-de-loops where we loop around two neighbors the same way we learned in the starting and ending a thread so i'm going to go down and do that now i'd like to point out here you could also use different kinds of earring findings and you could use pliers to attach your earring findings but for the purpose of this kit I know not everyone has pliers at home so I wanted to make it so you could do this without any pliers very minimal tools all you really need is a pair of scissors so I'm doing a little loop-de-loop -loop now making sure everything is very secure almost there Looping, looping. Okay, now I am going to grab my clippers, clip that off. You'll notice that I use wire cutters. I find with the fire line, it's a difficult thread to cut. So um, what wire clippers just work better for me and I could get a really tight cut. If you can't get your thread very close, you could always burn the little ends of it off to make it flush with your work. So now I'm taking my original tail from the very beginning where we started our work and I'm gonna thread that and then work that piece of thread back into the work as well with the same technique so we could just get rid of that. Same thing, take it up a couple of notches and loop it around and secure it and then you can clip it. Okay, so finish up getting rid of all of your strings and when you're finished, meet me back here and we will learn how to add fringe, which is really exciting. All right, bye. Okay, so now we're going to add fringe to the top part of our earring. To begin, you're gonna cut about four to five feet of the Nymo beading thread. Um, and when you do cut it, you want to stretch it. It's a bit of a stretchy thread and it will hold on to the loops that it had. So you really want to stretch all of those loops out before you ever start working with it. Um, so that's what I was just doing. And then I thread my needle. I'm going to take a look at my pattern sheet, which will tell me exactly where to put the beads. I see my first row is 28 white beads. And if I look at the word pattern here, you'll see row one, 28 W, that stands for 28 white. Um, and then yellow is the orangey yellow beads, and that's a Y. And the P is for the purple beads in the pattern. I find it sometimes easier to read it rather than like count off of the picture pattern. So it's up to you. I've provided both in my pattern um, for whichever is easier for you. So now I'm gonna find a place to start my thread. Um, I try to pick a couple roads up and the ones I was just trying were a bit too tight and I don't want to force my needle through there. So I'm going to go to the other side. Never force your needle through a bead. If it feels like it's difficult, then just choose another one because you don't want to break a bead. That's like the worst thing in the world. Um, so I found one. I'm going to loop around, do our little tension loop process like we've done several times now. Hopefully we're all great pros at it by this time. Doing a little loop. And I'm gonna want my thread to come out on the outside edge of that first row of ladder stitch. So now that I've done my little loop, I'm bringing my needle down the side edge of the beadwork. So 
Here we go, almost there. A little bit more. If you hear grumbling in the background, that's actually my cat purring, sorry. <laughs> I can't get her to move away from me. Um, okay, so now we're gonna add 28 white beads. Get everything set up, grab my beads, count out 28, it's a bit painstakingly slow process to watch but that's beating, it's slow, it's meditative, it forces you to be in the moment, it's so good for us. So here we go, still counting through. Now after this, you will see that I'm going to count again because you know, you just should always count again because it's the worst thing to get through five rows of fringe and realize that your first one was off and then you have to backtrack. So count once, count twice, count three times, make sure it's right. This little method I like to do where you push up the beads in sections with your needle. Um, that's an easy way to count. I'm counting again. <laughs> I think because I was looking through the camera, it was just counting was difficult for me on this day. So bear with me. Okay, so now I've counted, realize I need one more bead. So I'm adding that on to make 28. And then I'm going to pick up my end bead. So I pick up my end bead and I run my needle back through the 28 beads. So I get through, I pull, I didn't make it through all 28 beads, so I'm sort of slide that up, and then I go through the rest of them. And I bring the needle back up through the first two rows, two beads in the row of ladder stitch. Pull that up, and the beads are all going to stay in place because that end bead is there, and there you have your first row of fringe. Now I bring my needle back down through the second row and ladder stitch there, the second two little beads. Bring that down, I got hooked on, undo that, pull it down. Now I need to look at my pattern and figure out what beads I need to put here. So I'm going to look at the word pattern. It's one purple, six white, one purple. Not sure what came after that, but you have the pattern or you could download the pattern. So I pick up the beads for this row. Again, pretty painstaking. Just counting beads, kind of like watching paint dry. But I'm telling you, if you're doing it yourself, it's very, I don't know, I find beading very peaceful. And once you're good at it, you don't have to think about it so much. It's kind of like breathing. And it does give you space to sort of work out problems in your head and just find some peace. Okay, I'm just finishing up the rest of this row. Counting, make sure I have the right number of beads in there. Always count. And then I switched to a better angle because I realized you couldn't see. And so now I'm adding the end bead I'm doing the same technique of bringing my needle back up through the beads I just added. There we go. 
and then I bring it back up through that row in the ladder stitch that I started in for this strand of the fringe. So pull that tight, go slowly so you don't get any knots, don't get it hooked onto your beads, just go slowly. And now I'm coming down, bringing the needle down through the next two beads in the row of ladder stitch. And that's how you're going to continue on for all of the fringe. It's really, fringe I find is the easiest part. The hardest part of fringe is counting. <laughs> so it's so frustrating when you have to go back and realize you made a mistake in the fringe. So you're just going to continue on that way. Meet me back here when you get to your last row of fringe, and then we'll talk about finishing up. Okay, so here we are. We finished all of our fringe. Hopefully that was very satisfying for you. I love getting to this point. It's very exciting. My thread is coming out of that last row of ladder stitch, and then I'm going to take my needle and run it up through the top beadwork and find a place to loop around. Um, that's basically it. We have to just get rid of these threads, make sure everything is nice and secure. You want to check your fringe before you end off the thread and really just make sure everything is even, um, make sure there are no gaps, sort of tighten up things if you need to. You also don't want it to be too tight because then the fringe doesn't wiggle nicely. But I'm up here making a little loop-de-loop -loop, and then I'm going to clip that thread and we're good to go. Okay, so here we are. I finished weaving in my threads. Now I'm going to give them a little clip and then we are all set and ready to go. And I hope you're really proud of yourself because it looks amazing. Now, obviously you have to make another one, which is the annoying part about earrings, or you could just make one. It's up to you. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you would like to purchase the kit or purchase the pattern or purchase any of my other patterns, please check out the links below. And thanks so much for sitting through this video with me. Okay, bye.